stay in here. You stay in here. Stay downstairs. Good evening, everybody. I'm Bonnie Hunter. This is my studio. You are in the basement of uh, Quiltville. Um, Quilt Cam is where I turn on my camera in my studio and work on my own projects. Usually I'm on the road teaching, and those are a designated class, um, teaching a quilt from one of my patterns or my books or maybe something that I've shared online. But quilt cam is not about teaching a specific quilt. It's time that I spend in the studio on my own project. And if I can get an extra hour out of my day sewing here in my studio, you can pick up something and make a few stitches too. Every moment counts. And sometimes that, that last bit of day, if we can just do a little bit, oftentimes it's the only sewing I have been able to do today. Um, However, I have spent the last few days up at my cabin with my friend Mickey Dupree. We taught at a wonderful event in Winston-Salem, North Carolina this week, past weekend called Collaboration Celebration. We had 43 women from all over the United States and Canada join us for this event, and we had the best time. So we've had lots of inquiries. Conversations are underway on where we can shoehorn this into our schedules next. We're not only working with my schedule, but also with Mickey's and her travel schedule is often bouncing like a ping pong ball just as much as mine is and then there's the gals who were in charge of the entire event Mickey and I were just the hired help per se the event was run by Sew Sisters um, Lisa and Karen who are local to Winston-Salem and they did a shebang of a job for us we held the event at the Embassy Suites in downtown Winston-Salem and were pampered beyond belief. It was wonderful. So stay tuned for that information. Um, pardon me. Talk nonstop and the throat gets really dry. One of the things that I wanted to do tonight at the beginning of Quilt Cam is talk a little bit about our current Leader and Ender project, which is the Split Nine Patch. When I wrote the directions for Split Nine Patch and put them at the top of the blog, you can find it under the Free Patterns tab at the top of the blog, I mentioned what size units these are. This is a six inch finished block, so at this point it measures six and a half because there is a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the outside edge of the block. When I said the units finish at two inches and to do whatever you needed to do, to get these half square triangles to measure two inches finished, that is two and a half inches before they're sewn into the block. So if you are working with regular squares, you're probably going to be cutting things at two and seven eighths inches so that when you sew the seam, your half square triangle will measure two and a half inches square before sewing into the block. So that's three measurements you have to deal with two and seven eighths, two and a half what it will measure after you sew that center diagonal seam and two inches once it's sewn all the way around in the block like this. Now my favorite method is not two and seven eighths inch squares. I don't keep two and seven eighths inch squares on hand. I keep strips on hand and I grabbed a couple here. My directions online tell you that I will be working with the easy angle ruler and two and a half inch strips. Now this is going to give me the same measurement as that 2 and 7 eighths inch square because of one simple thing. We've removed the dog ear first. The dog ear, the height of the dog ear on a 2 and 7 eighths inch cut triangle is 3 eighths of an inch. If we can remove that dog ear first, I can work with a 2 and a half inch strip and get the same size. But I need the ruler to do it. So I wanted to clear up some uh, maybe misunderstood information, and that's why it says for you to use any method that you like as long as the finished measurement is two inches. There is a video um, on YouTube, if you're on my YouTube channel, also under the videos tab at the top of the blog on how I cut with specialty rulers. So be sure to check that out. The easy angle and companion angle are my right and left hand. 
Um, I love the Tri-Rex rulers also because they, they work with the sizes of strips I already have. Specialty rulers make my job really, really easy. So back to the split nine patch. This is coming completely. Whoops, if I can pull this up here. All the squares. Whoops, I just lost my block off my quilt rack. I don't have much of a rack. It doesn't like to stay up there. See this bin? This is two and a half inch squares that have been compounding every time I cut scraps. And now the bin is so full I can't hardly get it back in its drawer space. See, it's one of those drawers. So this is what I have on my table to build these blocks with. As I have, there goes the block again, we'll leave it down there. As I have been dealing with scraps and cleaning up stuff off of my table, if there is a short two and a half inch strip left over, I have been using my easy angle ruler and the two and a half inch strips to cut triangle pairs that will finish, they will measure two and a half inches side by side, top to bottom, and then finish at two inches in the block. This is the same size that you will get with two and seven eighth inch squares or three inch squares if you like to go three inch, draw a diagonal line, sew quarter inch either side, and then sliver trim everything down. I'm not a sliver trimmer. Remember, it's not how you get around to this shape. Whatever method works for you, just as long as they measure at this stage two and a half inches square and in the block will finish at two inches. How am I working on this as leaders and enders? Here's a block that I've got just happily sitting right next door to my machine. We'll talk about the machine in a minute. It's green. Can you tell? It matches my shirt. Can you tell? Okay, so here's our block. Do you see it's chained together? In between the rows, there's chaining threads here and there's chaining threads here. When I sew a nine patch block together like this, or any block, or any quill top, I like to do what is called webbing the top. If you look at this block, not only as rows, this is row one, row two, row three, I've also got columns. Column one, column two, and column three. I like to chain sew as much as possible. Now these are already sewn together, so it's, I'm going to have to flip them over in a little bit crazy way. This is column one and column two. Most people will take column one, put it right sides of column two, and then have to turn it around to sew it through their machine. Try this instead. And I would do this laying it out on my table, but it would be upside down for you and I think a little bit hard to understand. Imagine that column three is not sewn on here yet, okay? Take column two, fold it over column one, and that's the same direction it's going to go through the machine. So you sew column two to column one all the way down the block. And you will have column one and two in the first row, column one and two in the second row, column one and two in the third row. Then it's just a matter of adding the third square to row one, to row two, to row three, leaving the chaining threads. At this point, I decide which way I'm going to press. And I decided that the center row was going to be the one that tells me which way these seams are going to go. I've got half square triangle seams, which means that they both want to press to the unpieced square. So both of the center seams are going to go out, which means the top seams have to go in and the bottom seams have to go in. I don't need to snip my chaining threads. At this point, I can just flip these pieces right sides together and sew them. If you are a pinner, go ahead and pin. When it's a straight nested seam, and if my quarter inch seam allowance is where it needs to be, these seams will cross right where they need to be. And sometimes there are a, a needles width off, sometimes they're right on, sometimes, you know, it depends on what your tolerance level is. I have a high tolerance level. For me, it's, it's how it's going to look when the quilt is done. So I am sewing on my brand new green, 1950s green, and I'm nesting this seam. I feel for those seams to nest, and I keep my fingers there. Don't let them come apart. 1950s green electro hygiene machine. Yes, it actually does say electro hygiene on it. If you're on the blog post, you can see it. There we go. Now at this point, what would I do? I would grab more half square triangles, but I don't have any. 
and I'm going to be working on my crumb strips. So I am just going to come in here and, oh look, we will just add something onto here so that it's big enough to add across our crumb strip in a second. I love how she sounds. So this is a product of flying to Alaska, having it light until midnight, not being able to sleep, being four hours ahead time zone wise, and uh, spending too much time on eBay. <laughs> it's not good to be on eBay when your body is out of whack. Okay, so I've got row one and row two sewn together. Seams matching up pretty good because I nested those seams and my quarter inch seam is consistent. I nest the seams first, get those nested, and then make sure that the beginning is at the beginning and the end is at the end. So here I am going to fold row three over, nest that seam, snuggy it right up to where it needs to go. And once that's nested, align the top edge of the block and sew. Keep your fingers on that seam, don't let it come unnested. And I'm going to do it the same down here. Feel that nest. Sometimes I find that pins distort and I get a better match this way. However, if I am doing things like star points, when I have star to star and those points have to match each other, those are definitely a pin moment for me. So there's times that I do and times that I don't. All right. And I'm just grabbing stuff here. Oh, goody. Here's a couple of leftover half square triangles. People used to give me these in class when they did not want to sew them together themselves. So we're just doing it. And I will use those on my crumb blocks. The reason why I'm not sending a crumb block through here right now is because those are being sewn on paper and I have to make my stitch length smaller and I don't want a small stitch length on this. Okay. Let me press here. So here we go. Here's another split nine patch block. I do a lot of bending over and picking up even live in front of people. All right. Do so you see how you can arrange these? You can do so many different things with these blocks. We have not decided on a layout for you. What I did on the, the challenge page was provide you with a whole bunch of different methods for laying out half square triangles. You can lay these out in any log cabin layout and they're going to look great and we're going to annihilate that box of two and a half inch squares. So what I'm doing, I have a stack of half square triangle pairs next to my machine. As I need a leader and ender, I am sewing triangle pairs. I've got a stack of them right here that I have sewn over the last several sewing sessions. What I want is a good variety of half square triangles in my back stock to start with so that I can start laying out these pieces and sewing these together as my leaders and enders. So it's kind of a dual leader ender project. Work on your half square triangles first. Get a whole stack of these in, in a ver variety of colors and then you can start laying them out and building blocks and I think I'll rotate between the two. When I'm running low on half square triangles, I'll do more. That will be what I'll concentrate on. And then when I have a good supply, I will concentrate on making some blocks because I can't wait to see what these are going to be. So that's our info on the leader ender stuff that I wanted to talk about. Um, hope that helped those who were confused on the two and a half inch measurement. I am a finished size girl. I think on the finished size all the time. I'm a unit size girl. So Whatever it is you have to do in, with your favorite method to have a two inch finished half square triangle, that's what you're going to think about. Do not be concerned that I am sewing with a two and a half inch strip. Don't let that throw you off if you are a two and seven eighths or so big trim down girl. Just look at the finished size and do the math that you need to do to get you the right size for the block. So again, these blocks, they're going to finish at six inches. They're going to be a lot of fun. Are you with me? Okay. Let's see who's tuning in tonight. I've got a message from Subi here. Subi, I have a confession. 
I just got home a couple hours ago and there is a package from you on my dining room table and I haven't opened it yet because I needed to clean the room for quilt cam. <laughs> I will open it when we are done and I will probably post you in the morning. And I wanted to set this girl up. Here she is. She says she's pressing my nine patches for dancing nine patch quilt. Learned a valuable lesson. Add the sashings exactly the same. Okay, so did you put some on the right or and then some on the left and so you have seams that don't match up? Nobody will know by the time you're done. But that's one thing I try to do is be consistent with everything that I do. So if I am sewing four patches, they're all with the dark square leading. If I am sewing log cabins, which is pretty much what you're doing with the dancing nine patches, you're doing one short strip and then one long strip just on two sides only, it's good to keep them the same. Glad that you can join us tonight. And let's go to the inbox. If you are new to Quilt Cam and this is your first time with us, I do this only when I'm at home to do it. And this is the first time that I've had a chance to actually sit home and do this in about a month. Um, so there is no set night. There is no set time. Sometimes I do it on a weekend at 2 p.m. in the afternoon so that those in Europe can catch us. Um, sometimes I do it um, 9 p.m of an evening and I know that there are a lot of you out there tonight that are having to make a, a choice. Are you going to watch Quilt Cam or are you going to catch the next season of Duck Dynasty that starts tonight? If you're here with me tonight, bless you. I'm so glad that you are. Um, let's see. Here is Kathleen who says, Welcome home, Bonnie. Tonight I am working on Hexi Mug Rugs for Houston International Quilt Festival Mug Rug Exchange. And this is from Kathleen in San Juan, Texas. And she has put a little ruler by it. So it measures, oh, I'm guessing by your ruler, Kathleen, maybe a little over eight inches across. This is gorgeous. This is her mug rug challenge for the International Quilt Festival in Houston coming back up here in a couple of months. I can't believe it's going to be fall already. Our temps here in North Carolina 73 to 75 degrees today and the humidity is way down. It feels beautiful but it does feel like fall is right around the corner. Um, Dottie said I did my squares that way but then the seams didn't mesh because all outside edges were going the same way. How do I correct it? I don't understand your question. If your seams are going the same way then press them in opposing directions. Um, Elena says, finally, welcome back. You were missed. That's really nice to know. Thank you. I missed being here too. I have been absolutely running crazy. If you could just live on my shoulder for a while, you'd completely understand. Um, this one is from Robin in Bellingham. Oh, cool. She looks like she's pressing bias. She says, watching quilt cam and world's slowest binding session ever. Queen size and no room to put up ironing board. This is funny. She's got one of those little tiny pressing mats and she is just pressing her binding in half on this little tiny binding mat. Glad we can help keep you company tonight, Robin. Steven says Wonder Woman. Hey Steven, how you doing? He's in London. At least you, I think you're still in London. He says, I'm sure you must have superpowers. Have just finished Lazy Sunday Borders and All and really enjoyed this mystery. Best of all, it filled in the long gap between one Christmas mystery and the next. Here's a photo before I added the borders. I have trouble photographing it now as it's too big for me to lay out easily in my small flat. Have fiddled with your colors a bit and reduced it slightly in size. I did a 6x6 six six layout which finishes at 76 inches square. Then he's got all of those bonus pieces to um, play with. You know, I, I told the gals at Collaboration Celebration as they were going through and making up their minds on what they wanted to do, did they want it this way, did they want it that way, did they want to change the colors, that any quilt pattern is like a recipe. There's a dozen pattern or dozen patterns, dozen recipes out there or hundreds of recipes out there for brownies, right? How many of us make it the same? And we're free to decide if we want to throw in some pecans or change that to walnuts or throw in some butterscotch chips. A recipe is a recipe is a recipe. A quilt pattern is a recipe. You can do it your way. Oh, and I love his colors. Looks like he went autumnal. Gorgeous. I'm trying to blow this up as, as big as I can to fit the space. And it's going to do just the, just the middle there. So that's his lazy Sunday. 
and it's running in Quiltmaker Magazine right now. There's four issues that we, we did, four steps for this mystery. So that gave them a, a bunch of time because each issue comes out every eight weeks. Gorgeous, Stephen. Thanks for sharing. Let's go back to the top here. And then I'll tell you about this lovely machine. Kim Andrews, the 301 collector. <laughs> she says, home from shop hopping. Nice to know you weren't put on house arrest, Kim. She says, very few purchases. Glad for that. Relaxing while I watch you and go through my bags. I won't tell everybody what you did, Kim, unless you give me permission. But I'm still chuckling. Here's a, a comment from Gwyneth who asks what we are doing on Quilt Cam. I am quilting on Quilt Cam. Um, Quilt Cam is an extension of my website at quiltville.com and quiltville.blogspot.com. And I'll be sewing in just a second. Karen sent along a picture of her Smith Mountain Morning quilt, and it's going to be gifted to a wedding on Friday. So she's just down to the wire here. Gorgeous turquoises, blues, and browns. If you can see that quilt right there and that's Karen and she's with us tonight thank you Karen okay so this is my electro hygiene uh, green machine and I, I, I'm so pick, tickled about this I want to show you if I can get the cord how wrapped is my cord here oh I can I'm gonna move the camera pardon my hand and show you this machine from the front can you see that electro hygiene now this machine it says deluxe pre precision on here and if you see a machine with deluxe precision something that looks like this it looks like an old singer but it's not it's actually what they call a singer clone or an import I prefer to call them imports the the only thing that is really similar about this and an old singer is that the tensioner is back here on the back side oh you can see me reflected over there. The tensioners back here on the back side and they are shaped kind of waspy. They have a waspy waist here. After World War II um, we increased um, trade with Japan in an effort to help them build back up what was destroyed after we bombed the heck out of them. Um, no political statements, that's just the way that it was and we gave them a helping hand by um, importing household items to housewives here sewing machines came in by the thousands and the thousands and the thousands and unlike it was when you, we had Singer and um, National and other things um, these machines would be made by the thousands by one company and backstocked and then sold to different um, shops and stores under different badge names so you would come in with your order of I would like 350 of these in um, Chevy green and I would like them to say electro hygiene and they would put your badge on here and you would sell them in your store and then Macy's would come along and say I would like about um, 365 of these in powder blue and then they would put the Macy's badge on and whoever bought the machines in a certain numbered lot could have their own brand put here made by another company in Japan so that's that's the story on the Japanese import machine and they really do not have serial numbers not like Singer does you can't track them down to the plant that they were made in very well and you can't get a birth date on them we just have a general era that these machines in this style straight stitch only class 15 were likely circa 1950 and circa means you can go 10 years one way or the other okay so here she is really really sweet I love the chrome here on on the side plate she's got a lovely little knob here I can drop the feed dogs all the way down or put them back up and her bobbin winder works really really great I know you're probably really dizzy so I'm gonna put you back to where you were and we're gonna sew okay so how are we here cut off my head a little bit gonna fix that just a hair all right, so we're ready to sew. What am I working on? First thing I'm going to do is put my stitch length a little bit smaller because I am working on where we left off. This is my studio time, remember? So you can say you're sewing on that again. Yeah, I'm sewing on again because it needs to get done. These are my crumb blocks. They are made by sewing over two and a half inch by eight and a half inch 
strips of paper with random pieces of fabric and then I trim them down and sew four of these strips together into a block. Here's one that's ready to be trimmed down. The paper is completely covered. What kind of paper am I sewing on? Printer paper. You can use any kind of paper that you want, but I find that printer paper or reject paper or phone book or whatever it is does the job. It's free. I don't have to pay for it, and it comes off easily if I make my stitch length small enough. So I'm just going to add some pieces onto here. I don't know what you're working on. Why don't you drop me an email at quiltville at gmail.com and let me know what you're sewing on. I like to work on two projects. Two two strips at a time. Check in my stitch length here, make sure I'm small enough. I think I am. I think or maybe I can go just a tiny titch tighter. Remember, the closer the holes in the paper, that means the smaller the stitch, the closer the holes, the easy that easier that paper is going to be to remove. Okay, so I'm going to start another one by placing this strip that I just sewed as a leader ender across the center and adding another piece to it. Here's the piece of the, this was the end of a strip set. I must have been making four patches or something and, and got as far as I could go. That was what was left. We're going to turn it this way and sew it across. I start in the center of the strip. That covers a lot of ground and then I just have to work out the ends and I can decide which way I want to build on. If the paper is falling off before you are ready for it to fall off, that looks good. Just make your stitch a little bit longer and the paper will stay on. So uh, right now I'm just covering these two corners of this triangle I sewed on here. I've already got blue. I'm just going to grab a handful of stuff. I usually like to just put a pile and pull from it. And then if there's not the color that I like, I'll go dig back some more. I'm going to put this red right here. Go maybe just a tiny bit larger there, just a titch. If these blocks finish at eight inches, and I want to do, yeah, I am trimming the seam allowance because that's a lot of bulk in there. A large bed size quilt with them. I can go 10 blocks across and that's 80 inches, but I'd need to do like 12, 11 or 12 blocks down, so I'm at least at 80 blocks, 80 of these. I will be working on this a long time. Here's one set of 10 I have pinned together. There's 10 blocks in this pin. And here's another set of 10, so that's 20. This pile is not quite at 10 yet, so I'm almost at 30 of 80 blocks. So at least 80 blocks. So we will be working on this for a while. I promise to get you a new project um, as quickly as I can. I spent time this week working on our November mystery. So that's why I don't have a lot of pictures to share. It wouldn't be a mystery anymore. If I told you. So if you don't if you are new to Quilt Cam and you don't know about our November mystery, in October on my blog, that's quiltville.blogspot.com, I will post yardage requirements. And then the day after Thanksgiving, that's Black Friday. The first clue, I think this purple, I like this purple. Um, it's not really a scrap, but I am going to cut some. This was the end of a piece of batik, and it looks like that's where the print stopped. And you see how there's there's no print out here. When they stamp a batik, it's it's dip the wood block in the wax, and they actually by hand stamp the wax design onto the fabric. And I guess there there is a bit of margin on the edge of that fabric, and this ended up in the junk pile. And I scavenged it when I was in Bali. Add this here. Back to the mystery, every Friday from the day after Thanksgiving on to approximately New Year's Day or maybe a week later. It depends on um, 
how intricate the steps I give you are and how many I decide to break them up into. So I'm really not giving you a, an absolute we will finish by this date kind of a thing. Okay, this piece. Oh, yeah, I think we can put you right there. And it's a free quilt. Last year's was named Easy Street. If you go to Pinterest and you type in Easy Street Quilt, you will see some really great stuff. I love the colors that other people have chosen and what they've done. For me, remember, I'm just giving you the basic recipe. You can, you can change it up how you want it. Can I put that on there, or is that going to be? I think that'll do it. And I heard a jingle on my phone, and I'm going to check that in a second. That's from my son, who says, I'm headed to Sean's for a little bit. Be back later. Love you. <laughs> and you know what I did? And I, I just realized I did this. So I am going to have to come to... This is ridiculous. Okay, so when I was in Alaska, I was running a giveaway and expecting, I think there was like 400 comments that day, and I couldn't log into my email because the um, reception was so bad. I had like no connectivity, and if, if I had over 400 comments for that giveaway in my email server, it was just going to be a mess. So I turned the comments off on my blog. So guess what's not coming into QuillCam right now? So what I'm going to do is go to the blog post and see who's commenting and I will read it directly from here. We've got several of you and I'm just going to go down here this way. I am ridiculous, I know. This is from Patricia who says, I'm working on magic pinwheels tonight. Cheryl says, what a cute green machine. I also got a 1950s machine this week, a Singer 301A. Wonderful. You will love your 301. I, I have been sewing on a 301 at, up at the cabin this weekend, and there it, it's such a smooth machine, slant needle, beautiful, beautiful stitch. She says, I had to borrow a friend's featherweight bobbin case to test it out. Mine is on order, and she sews nicely. I want to see if you come home from the cruise with a new vintage machine. Maybe the sea green of this machine was just to get you ready for the sea cruise. Now, won't you let me take you on a sea cruise? Um, hubby is probably going to freak out that, you know, secret ordering in the middle of the night on eBay is probably not the safest thing, but I, I do love this. I do love this, and the, and, and the the price was re very reasonable. Rebecca says, working on borders for a sampler quilt. Shirley, how are you, Shirley? She says, love your new machine. I just finished my second Easy Street. Love it. I am now going to start the challenge. Split nine patch. Thanks for quilt gam. Always good to hear from you, Shirley. She's in Virginia. And we have Lynn, a thimble mouse country. She says, Country Crossroads, just finished my sewing homework and getting ready for a late supper, but so nice to catch you for a couple of minutes. Duck Dynasty, she says. I think not. <laughs> but yes, you will lose out to food. That's okay. Food, food over quilt cam any day. We should not pass out while we're quilting. Mary Ellen checks in. She says she's sewing squares together for backgrounds for applique turtles. How cute! Found the pattern while cleaning out my garage. Quilt cam tonight, it's a great present for me on my birthday. So happy birthday to Mary Allen tonight. And Mary says, Mary from Canada, currently in West Virginia. Mary came down and, and sewed with us and uh, so happy to have her with us. She says, set up my featherweight in the motel room so I can work on the flippy corners while I watch you and hubby watches the ducks. Is he watching the Oregon ducks or is he watching Duck Dynasty? She says she needs headphones. Please send headphones. Glad you're making your way back to Canada. If you are a regular blog follower, Mary was the one with the ginormous dress shears from 1890. Absolutely love it. Don't mess with her fabric. And the other Mary says, thanks for quilt cam tonight. On Facebook, the ladies were talking about I Love Lucy making a dress on her free Westinghouse machine. 
I'm waiting to see that episode on the Hallmark Channel this Friday morning. How fun to go to Alaska twice this fall. Glad you are back for a little between. Duck Dynasty will have to be DVR'd. I have a playoff baseball game to go to soon. So really, really glad um, you all are tuning in with me tonight. If you are unable to watch due to hubby demanding Duck Dynasty time, Quillcam is also archived on my YouTube channel, so you will find it over there. So I inherited a lot of these really strange pieces that are two fabrics of the same color sewn together. Is that a problem? Nope, because when fabric is down to this stage of it's the scrap user system. I feel free to just make a snip and rip those pieces apart. It's a really neat Northcott fabric in a big piece, so I'm going to send this right across the center here. Maybe add some more of my purple onto it. 80 blocks. Do you think I can get that done? While I was in Alaska, I was shopping in a really cute store in Homer, and Sherry, the bless her heart, the gal that was with me, said, Do you, are you going to buy this fabric? I'm just petting the bolts as we go down the aisle. And my comment was, I could buy what I want, but what I can't buy is time to sew it up. So my, my time right now is uh, concentrating on getting... 15 minutes here or there to sew it up. This one's finished. I'm going to put it in a to-be-trimmed pile. When that one's finished, we just reach over and grab another one. Did you see how I am using each one of these as the leader and the ender for the other? Two in a chain is sufficient. Whoops, I've already got this one going. Almost lost it in my pile of scraps. Two in a chain is sufficient. 47 is too many. It's too hard to pull them all up and get them pressed. So we're working on this one. This one needs one more piece at the top. And some of these fabrics are not the most gorgeous, but it doesn't matter. Oh, look at this. Here's part of a, hmm, we may pull that apart. Ah, we'll grab in here. Some of these are just a little bit too small to cover that two and a half. So we can sew pieces together and then sew them on together. If you feel like you're not getting the time to sew, like you really, really want, it's time to do something about it. Some of these strings are just pretty kind of wrinkly here. This looks like an old thimbleberries piece. It's about an inch wide. I'm going to sew it on the other side of that triangle wedge. So the hubby was left... <laughs> I left him in uh, Anchorage. My flight left for home before his left for Salt Lake. And he spent the week visiting high school friends and friends from where we used to live in Idaho. And he made his way up to Boise and then on to Payette, Idaho in Ontario, Oregon, where he has spent the last week with his dad and his brother and some other friends from when we lived in that area. And he will be meeting me in Seattle on Friday night. And the cruise leaves on Saturday. I'm really excited. This is the first time I have cruised to Alaska. It's different parts of Alaska that I than I've seen before. And everybody says it's really, really great. So I am I'm hoping that it lives up to, you know, you hope that the weather's good. You hope you're not out there on rough seas because some freak storm came and rained for days. But you never know because you're dealing with Mother Nature. I sew on this big cheddar piece here. The 
only cruising I have done has been Caribbean wise, either to Mexico, we went down around Mexico to uh, Puerto Vallarta and to Cabo San Lucas and all that. I've done the Eastern Caribbean, Western Caribbean, but those are always bathing suit kind of cruises and you know you're going to be hot and you pack the sunscreen. Well, Alaska is going to be maybe mid 50s to 60s. If we push 70, we'll be lucky. Um, Although it is a little bit further south than I was when I was um, in Anchorage. It's just weird to think of packing for this trip. All right, I keep reaching in this other bucket because nothing in my pile is what I want. Of course. Then we open up the drawer and sew something on. So I'm thinking really, really casual. And the thing that I am balking at the most is the fancy dress-up clothes for the fancy dinner evening. Little, little basic black dress can go a long way if you throw a scarf over it, right? The problem is the shoes. I don't do heels well. Mickey says, Sweet home Chicago! Yes! Go Bears! She's home. Um, had a wonderful time. Sad to leave the cabin and um, I left her machine there set up and, and stuff like that. So she'll have to come next time. I'm glad she made it home sweet home. I'm so I'm sure her dog Molly is giving her kisses all over the place. So I'm going to tell her so. Whoops, 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 whoops. Okay. So she made it. That's good. It's always wonderful to have people come visit. It's sad to have them go home, but always happy to know they can come back. So I'm going to sew these two triangles right together through the paper. Things to look for when wanting a vintage machine. Try to find something that's fairly standardized. These Japanese clones were imported by the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands under all different kinds of badges and all kinds of different colors and models and whatever. My favorite is the straight stitch only. If you start going with the zigzag models, just be sure that in straight stitch mode, if it does zigzag, that straight stitch is in center needle position because some of them home to the left and only zigzag right from left home. So when you put it on straight stitch, the needle is left and it makes it really hard to get a quarter inch seam when you're running on one feed dog. So check out where home position is for straight stitching. Check to see if it has a bobbin case. Check the wiring, bend it, make sure that it's not going to crack and expose bare wires uh, for you. Um, check to make sure that it has a tension spring. I found machines that seem to be a great deal until, whoops, no check spring, so then that has to go into the shop to have a check spring added or, or whatever. Um, turn the hand wheel. Make sure it can be, it's okay if it's a little sticky, but if it stops and does not move at all, you may have a bent shaft or something like that. So really, really try to move the hand wheel. And just know that if you find something at a really, really cheap price, it might not be as big a bargain as you thought. Um, by the time you add a, a bobbin case and a check spring and new wiring for the lamp or, or foot pedal or whatever, that you may be adding $100 to that $35 that you paid for that machine. However, if it gives you a machine you love and you will use it, then absolutely it's worth it. Okay, so this one is now done, ready to be trimmed up. Let's go back to the comments that are clear on, on the blog post because stupid me didn't fix that into my email. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the blog post 
where the comments are and work backwards. How's that? Sarah says, I am new to quilt cam. Tonight I am working on binding for a quilt. I am so happy to has, have discovered your vlog. I wish I had your energy. So do I. We watched some little kids tonight just bouncing around at the Chinese buffet. My son Jeff, um, as soon as I got home, he said, I'm hungry, let's go. I said, okay, let's go. And the, the booth behind us, three little kids. Rah! I wish I had that energy. She says, I was visiting family in Lancaster County when you went there for the quilt show. I cannot believe that you made that trip and a trip to Alaska all before I got home from eastern Pennsylvania. You do what you got to do. You just do what you got to do. Glad you could join us here, Sarah, and I hope that you'll be back. I update the blog at least once a day, if not twice, um, with what's going on. Linda says, I remember vacuum cleaners called Electro Hygiene when I was a kid back in the 50s. Evidently, that company sold sewing machines too. Now, that's something I will have to look up. Um, that, that makes the electro part and the hygiene part make sense because we're going to suck up the dirt and keep it clean. <laughs> right? Okay, I'll look that up. Thanks, Linda. Ann Park says, while watching Quilt Cam tonight, I am working on marking my squares to make the points on the stars of my collaboration celebration blocks. We had so much fun. We really did have so much fun. If you were on the fence about joining us this time, you will not want to miss it next time. She says, thanks to you and Mickey as well as the Sew Sisters for such a great time. Bluebird says, working on a black and white nine patches for a swap. Your timing is perfect. It gives me someone to sew with. So glad that you're here with me tonight, Bluebird. Sue Bishop says, is the quilt cam a little blurry or is it me? No, it's probably me because it is focusing on the closest thing to the camera, which is this point right here on the sewing machine. If I come in really close, see, it will focus in on me. But if I sit a little bit back to sew, it's going to focus right here. So we just deal with it. Besides, that, it, that's that, that, that blur gets rid of my wrinkles. Um, Thart says, I am knitting and watching Quilt Cam. Love Quilt Cam. Kathy Biggs says, love that green machine, Bonnie. It's a good thing I don't have room to collect sewing toys. Or I would be in so much trouble working on a throw size quilt for my husband made from Ford truck panels. Just added extra borders and getting ready to sandwich for quilting. We'll post a picture on my blog when it's complete. Okay. That blurry thing, um, I have fought with it for quite a while. If I put the camera to the side of me, you can't see what I'm doing at all. So uh, if I put it there and I focus it on me as, as best as I can, but any part of the sewing machine is in front of me, it's going to focus here. So there is nothing I can do on an auto-focusing um, external webcam. I've tried everything. So we just deal with it and you can focus on the machine instead of me. Um, hold this up here. We're going to add another piece. How about something light right across there? And the closer I get, I try to fake it out. If I if I bring myself in close, you can see the camera will all of a sudden focus in. And then if I back up, I wish it would just stay. But we do the best we can. We do the best we can. Besides, then you can't see that my eyebrows are still growing out <laughs> if it focuses. Uh. Okay add a piece here. I've got another piece of that. We're just going to add it right back on. I'm just aiming for an approximate quarter inch seam here. Oops. And I just broke my thread. Who knows why. What happened there? We will re-thread. Let's just see. It probably hit a knot in the thread. That was a jingle. From Nell, who says, dug my Blue Heaven UFO out, pressing and cutting for the rest of the flying geese. Quilt cam, perfect end to a tiring day of meetings. And that's hugs from Nell. She's in Nebraska. And let's see, to thread this, yeah, it feels like there was a knot right here in the thread. So we're going to 
I want like to take it all the way out of the out of the tension gauge. So there's a groove right here. Boy, that lamp is putting out some heat. I may turn that light off. Yeah. It's whew, fry an egg right there. So much for electro hygiene. Around this little post, through the hole in the take up lever, which I call the uppy downy. You know, I couldn't think of the name of it. That thing, it goes up, it goes down, that uppy downy. The nice thing about a class 15 machine that has the take up lever on the side is when you're sewing really close, you don't whack yourself in the forehead. All right, through here. Come on, baby. Go in the groove for mama. There you go. Around this hook. And unlike a featherweight that threads right to left from inside to outside, this goes the opposite from left to right. And I find it easiest to use a needle threader because I can't put my head down on the top of the table to see what I'm doing sideways. Need a little bit more light. I am visually challenged as it is. You know, it's really bad when hotels have the same colored plastic bottle for the shampoo as they do for the conditioner. And there is no difference in the shape or the color of the label or whatever. And I can't tell which one it is. Last time I did that, I put conditioner first. Didn't work. <laughs> Blind as a bat. Okay. I'm going to cut apart here and we're going to sew that again. Check the guides. Make sure that we are not hung up on anything. Okay, back running. Get off those tails. So I have let the hubby decide what he wants to see excursion-wise um, on this cruise. One of the things up for debate, which everybody says that I have to have to do, is the helicopter ride to the top of the glacier. If you have done that, email me, quiltville at gmail.com. Or if you have done the Alaska cruise and there was some excursion that you really absolutely loved, let me know. The thing I'm most afraid of is that, okay, we go whale watching, there's no whales. Um, I've been whale watching in San Diego before. I can't imagine it would be much different. But um, I need something that will keep the man happy. That is lots less hot. You would imagine, you couldn't imagine the heat that was coming off that thing. There's just a wealth of junk in this place here. Okay, these are two and a half inches exactly. If I can lay it on here straight and sew it straight, I should be able to barely cover the paper. Okay. Now this should be an interesting thing. I've got a lot of really big chunky stuff going on here without a lot of interest. So I sewed on this triangle. I'm going to sew on two more triangles to cover these corners, kind of flying geese fashion. And when this is added to another piece unit, it should have something to capture the attention of somebody somewhere. How about red? That's not big enough. How about this red? That looks big enough. Okay. Just has to be big enough to cover that corner, and then the other piece can be big enough to cover the raw edge of that. All of my stuff from Collaboration Celebration has been pulled in from the car, but it's not unpacked yet. It's in my dining room, so my favorite thread snips and everything are all packed up still. Okay, we're going to add a piece of this purple because I like it. Just run one through and snip the one off from behind and bring it forward. One stays under the needle. This keeps your
piecing continuous and saves miles of thread. I'm talking miles. Your bobbins will last a heck of a lot longer if you don't have thread tails that are longer than your seam. So if anybody has an idea of what I can do to not have an autofocus camera focus on the machine and focus on me instead so I'm not blurry to you, let me know. I may have to get a camera that does not autofocus. Because really I am concerned about how it is for you on the other end. Lovely little 1930s Scotty Dog print right next to the purple batik. There we go. This one's done. I do like to come back and if I have a, a lot of extra bulk in my seam allowance, trim that off. Just get it out of there. It's going to be towards a corner. It's going to be a bulky spot anyway. All right. I think that'll be good. Let's go back to the inbox. See who's getting us here. Mary says, I'm working on, this is Mary Wilbank, says, I'm working on fair and square. All the string blocks are done and cut. I am putting borders around the patch blocks. I recently got a Remington Deluxe sewing machine for 10 bucks. Awesome. She says, it sews, but I need to have the motor checked out just so that I know it's good. It's a fun machine. And probably for checking the motor, they will also go through and balance your tensions, give it a good oil and lube. Um, especially if it's been sitting a long time, it should sew slick as a whistle with just a basic tune-up. That's wonderful, Mary. They are they are a whole lot of fun to sew with. And here's YouTube who says, I like your quilt. Thanks so much, Lauren. And this one is from Gail who says, hello from Maine. So glad I could catch you tonight. I have done 100 blocks of the 6.5 inch leader and or 9 patch blocks, split 9 patch that I showed earlier. This is what I showed earlier if you've just joining us. This is our leader ender challenge. We're working on split nine patches. And she says, um, they started out as leader enders, but I got obsessive and couldn't stop making them, waiting to see what we should do with them. I am just obsessed with these leader ender blocks. I love them and don't want to do anything else. I'm also working on the red talk and turkey quilt, as well as using inch and a half strips and making spools. I love them. So I have an abandoned most other projects and have become a Quiltville groupie. So glad to have you along, Gail. You know, that's the one thing about Leader Ender projects. That they become the primary project, and then your other project has to become the Leader Ender for the Leader Ender projects. Now, depending on how you like to work with loopholes, if you sewed this one and used this one as the Leader Ender for it and you were chasing the tails of each block, with each other as leaders and enders just like this is that really cheating or is it good I say just sew up the fabric if this project is speaking to you just do it and there really are no instructions on how you're supposed to sew them together check the blog post with all of those layouts of those blocks choose a layout that suits you sew it together remember this is just the recipe but you make the finished item you decide how it's going to be Here's Kim who says talks about her Alaska cruise. She says, loved our Alaska cruise. No rough seas. Bring warm clothes. You will need them. I had one pair of shorts, sweaters, and jeans. Would love to go again. No real fancy clothes needed. Sandals are fine too. Don't worry. Several quilt shops at stops. Fun to visit. Have fun. And that's uh, number one. We've got two and a half days at sea. On those days, we will have our quilt class. I've got our project all ready to pack up. I'm really excited about it. And um, the other days, we will be hitting port. When we're in port, we go do the things that we want to do in port, including hitting quilt shops or going on excursions or things like that. It's a very relaxed atmosphere. If you have never been on a quilting cruise, um, you would really, you would really enjoy it. This is my third one with so many places, and they couldn't be better. Um, besides, so you get somebody to cut up your fruit for you every morning. What's not to like about that? Get a massage somewhere. How about a piece of leopard print right in the center? And we will sew right on top of the leopard print. 
I need something a little more contrasty. How about, ooh, I think I like these sewn to each other. Scrap that. We're going to sew these to each other first, and then we'll sew those on. It's a pair of cut-off triangle ends from something. Okay. I'm always amazed at how fast time flies when we do quilt cam. This is a piece of orange batik. I think it can go right on top of the 1930s Scotty dogs, don't you? Absolutely. Something that's really fun to do, this is going to be too small, I know, is to take a little guy like this, and I do cut off dog ears, okay. So I just sewed these two triangles together to make it big enough to fit on the this strip. The strip is really there just to give me a size to shoot for and to keep my stitching under control so that I don't build out in a crazy shape that I can't get a two and a half inch strip from. I'm going to sew this leftover piece to the end of this. And you can just add piece little units and then add your pieced units to your strip piecing. Is that big enough to cover? That's a fairly basic one. It's amazing. My piecing is going very large tonight, which is different than blocks past. Maybe because I thought I have to do 80 of these. We're going to go bigger. Okay. These are, I'm going to sew that on there right on that side. This is just, just right at two and a half inches, so I am putting it right there and building around it. Because I'm afraid if I sew it on as a sew and flip that I would have it at some crazy angle and it would not be in the right spot to cover the paper. Okay. I have over here also some little half, weird half square triangles that I've just sewn together and they are not even square. I'm going to sew them to each other. We don't worry about triangles being true or square or whatever. We just sew them on. Okay, this color scheme is boring. We need some purple. Still have this. I've kind of got an idea on how I want to lay these out, but I'll wait till I get my 80 blocks done first just to see if it works. Okay, now I have two triangles sewn together, and I can lay those down the center and sew something to them. Anytime you put in little recognizable regular patchwork elements, like if you see triangles in a piece strip, where do your eyes go first? To me, that goes right to those triangles. Don't they go right to those triangles? So if you can include little triangles in your piecing, see your eyes will go right here, I'm sure, or up here, right to the triangles. And on this one, where do your eyes go? For me, they go right to the triangles and angles that are in there. It really pops up your piecing and makes it interesting to look at. Okay, this piece, I am like an eighth of an inch short. So instead of adding something here, what I'm going to do is just piece longer on this end. Remember, the paper is just a size. It's just telling you how big you need to go. I think we shall sew on some Winnie the Pooh right next to the leopard print because we can. And then we're going to throw together a couple more triangles because we can. iron both of these. So this one is looking fairly on the boring scale because it's all straight pieces. This one needs some angles. So I'm going to do that down here on the bottom. 
I'm going to add this piece that I made with two small triangles and a section added to make it big enough to go across the block. And don't forget to sew some lights into your blocks because the lights really add the daylight in. They give your eye a place to rest. If I didn't have so many lights in this one, it would just be a mess of all of the same value. Here's another one. I really, really like this one. This one's a fun one. But it's those little light areas that make it sparkle. Okay, if I bring it closer here, I bet you the camera will focus in on it. Yep, it did. See, the camera is focusing on whatever the closest item is to the lens. And I am not the closest item. Okay. Let's check some more. Here's Karen who says, finished piecing Lazy Sunday and am now back to Jamestown Landing making string blocks. Thrift shopping last week landed me my first vintage machine, a Remington, boy there's a lot of Remingtons popping up tonight, for $10. I am sewing on now, then came a featherweight and a Spartan. Last week? Three machines? See, I'm, I don't have anything in the running. She says, antiquing tomorrow and who knows what else. Glad for quilt cam tonight. Thanks for all you do. And that's Karen in California. Glad to hear from you, Karen. Here's from Frida who says, it's Frida. And I am sewing on my piece taxis we started last weekend. I had a sweet new machine waiting for me when I got home Monday. Attached, you will find a picture. I am having a hard time finding out how to thread. It threads the same way that I, it looks the same way that I just did this one, but this hers is really sweet. This is what I would call a Bel Air. It's two-tone, just like the cars of the era, blue and white. If you look for the threading diagram for a Singer 15, it will be very similar to the way your machine needs to be threaded. You will come from the spool pin. I'm coming from the, the, the thread cone stand. There's a piece with a groove here. Come around your attention guide, up, and be sure that you're catching the check spring. There's a little L-shaped post on mine here. I don't know if there is on you, but you will be on that other side of that L-shaped post, up through the uppy downy, down through the eye, through the catch here, this little hook right here, and you will thread it left to right. But look for the, the Singer manual, class 15 manual. There are lots of free manuals online. Just type in Singer 15 manual. And there are people who are trying to sell them too, but you can find them. I think it's in the Library of Congress that they're, that they're free. You can just download it. Okay. I really had a fun time with Frida this past weekend. She came all the way from Texas to play with us. I'm right, going to add this big triangle on here. I don't know how the connectivity is going to be on the cruise. The last time I was on the cruise, they wanted a, a nickel and an arm and a leg to for Wi-Fi access on the ship was something like 20 bucks a day or something. I love you, but I don't know if I'm going to pay that. <laughs> I may just try to... Um, upload things when I reach close enough to shore to have my 4G. We will see um, how that goes. Okay, so I extended myself on this end more than I was short on this end. So I will be able to get my 2.5 by 8.5 inch strip out of that one. Okay, that's really cute, Frida. I love it. Wow, my goodness! Here's Carolyn Mullins who says, I finished the pineapple crazy. You are crazy. You know how many pieces are in that over 12,000. She finished pineapple crazy, which I started in my class in Pipe Stem Park, West Virginia last November. She says, I have questions on how you quilted this very heavy, busy quilt. What batting do you recommend as I know it will add to the weight of the finished quilt? Also, do you have recommendations? for panographs that work well for this quilt. She says she thoroughly enjoyed it. I did do a panograph on mine. The, the, those pineapple blocks are five inches finished and there are I think 45, 35, something like that pieces in each pineapple block. So I chose a leaf print 
and I scaled it down fairly small because I wanted it densely quilted because the pieces in the quilt were so small. My feeling is, is that the quilting needs to fit the size of the patches in the quilt. So I didn't want to do some big swooping thing and miss most of the pieces that are in the block. So I chose something really close. Um, if she is still listening, I used um, Hobbs 8020 batting in that quilt. And it is heavy because there are more seams, more fabric in the seam allowances that are showing on the front of the quilt. Congratulations on your uh, pineapple crazy. Please send me some pictures. This one is from Geronda who says, you are living my dream, quilting and owning a cabin in the mountains of North Carolina. We own land in Fleetwood. Oh my goodness, Fleetwood's not that far from me. She says, and visit there some, but no cabin yet. Love to follow your blog and webpage. You were at our guild several years ago, Denton Quilt Guild. Would love to have you there again, but I am not in charge of programs. She says, keep up the good work. I hope to make it back there too. This one's from Alice who says, welcome home. I've checked your schedule via your calendar. You are one busy lady. Some days I wake up and wonder, did I handle it all? Did I take care of this? Did I get this order? Did I get that? Whatever. I figure one of these days I'm going to have a completely big screw up and then I'll know to scale back. <laughs> but we just keep going. She says, I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I'm vacationing with no sewing machine. She says, having major quilting withdrawals. Was so excited when I came across your website a month ago. Got so super excited when I saw Quilt Cam tonight. I'm so glad that you could tune in. Thanks for sharing your time and talents with us all. And it looks like that, at least for quilters, Quilt Cam is winning out over Duck Dynasty. That's fun. And this one who says, working on pink crumb, crummy strips on my old green Vigorelli. She's doing pink crummies. Oh, this is really cool. This is really cool. That's a, her Vigorelli. My girlfriend Karen's dad um, was a Vigorelli, um, so was a sewing machine guy, and his shop sold Vigorellis in the 50s and 60s. Um, and she, hers are all in shades of pink, so that's going to be really, really super cool. Love it, love it. And she's from Br Brazil. That's really cool. So Ivani in Brazil. I got to save your picture, Ivani. That's really gorgeous. And one more, and then I'm going to sew a bit. This is Susie. She says, My first quilt cam, but a long time Bonnie follower. Thank you so much. She says, Working tonight on my reunion quilt. I couldn't make it out west this summer for the family reunion. So instead, I sent Florabunda blocks for each family to sign. Got them back last week, so it's assembly time. It will be sent to a lucky attendee for Christmas. And that's Susie from New Orleans. So glad you could tune in, guys. So as far as next quilt cam goes, as soon as we get home from um, the cruise, we are going to be right into Labor Day weekend and my, then my anniversary week. 32 years this man has put up with me. Um, 32 years he may be throwing me overboard. Who knows? Um, I honestly don't know. We will get home from the cruise on a red-eye flight. Ooh, I'm going to use the triangles. I like those and that purple right there. Red-eye flight homes don't really agree with me very well. They make me a zombie for a couple of days. But I am home for a little bit more than a week. Over that next weekend, I think, that, that first weekend of September is also um, Labor Day, of course. And we're going to try to get up to the cabin for Labor Day. You guys, the weeds are like knee high. And I feel so bad because the, the old guy that we bought the cabin from, it was meticulous. The gardens were gorgeous and manicured and well-groomed and everything. And here come the hunters. And we don't visit for a month. And the, the, all the beautiful blooming flowers in the... the the flower boxes on the rail for the deck are all dried up and crispy and the weeds are out of control and the, the grass by the road is knee high. They're probably going to report us to the homeowners association. So our goal is to trim it all up but at the same time we want to return certain parts of it back to nature but not in a way that it looks shabby. Um, so we've got a date with a weed eater. And then that big open front yard, what I want to do is plant some more trees. 
and something that the deer won't eat but that will add a little bit of, of nature back to that yard because it's so wide open and the whole thing is mulched because you really can't have lawn but he's mulched it but I'm sure he used to keep the weeds down and I don't want to put Roundup or anything to kill those weeds there because the deer come in and eat so little by little we just want to return it back to nature in a slightly manageable manicured way is that possible that's the plan and we did have a, a sweet little female deer come snack we saw her twice in the last couple of days I opened up the front door and there she was in the front door on the top level and she looked right up at me and her ears went like you know danger 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 she didn't run away and I just very quietly shut the door and, and moved over to the window because I just wanted to watch what she was doing. And they, they are just beautiful to watch. And the way I figure it, we took this land from them and now there's nowhere for them to go. And um, we'll do what we can to make it work for both of us. See how much more fun these blocks are if you can throw in a couple pieced elements here and there. It just makes it look so much more interesting. There's a nice lime green batik triangle. We're going to iron it out. If you are new tonight to Quilt Cam and would like updates on when the next one will be, I would ask that you join my Facebook page. It, do a, go to the search bar at top and type in Quiltville Friends. Q-U-I-L-T-V-I-L-L-E-F-R-I-N-D-S. Quiltville Friends, one word. And if you give my page a like, I usually send out in the morning that I'm going to be able to do Quilt Cam. I send um, an update. Quilt Cam will be tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. And then again, throughout the day, I may send another couple of messages. And about an hour ahead of time, I will send out a message. And then when, when Quilt Cam finally is running, up and running, I send the link directly through Facebook so that you can just click the link and be there. And you never know what I'll be sewing on. Sometimes I'm sewing on my treadle machine. Sometimes I'm working here on, on a variety of, of different machines. I really love them. And Quilt Cam is also a time that I can trade the machines out because they each need a workout. It's not good to leave a machine just sitting unused in a closet. So if you have a machine you haven't used in a while, bring it out. Oh, this is cool. I like this piece. I'll sew that right there. I think that'll work. Another thing I love about these class 15 machines, this is the size of the bobbin. Huge bobbin. Holds a ton of thread. Let's see, what else have I got in here? Okay. This is the size of a featherweight bobbin. So you can do about twice the amount of sewing, if not more, with a class 15 bobbin versus a featherweight. And it was really frustrating sewing with my 301 up at the cabin because it uses a featherweight bobbins. Great machine, dinky bobbins. And just when you think you're getting your long chain of triangles going, you find out you've been air sewing for about 50 pairs. Jingle, jingle, jingle. Oh, here's my hubby. He says, we're watching you online. Oh, 
Hi, hubby. How are you? How's everybody? He's actually at my father-in-law's. Um, I believe he is. Are you at Bruce's or are you at, at um, Dad's? See what arrived in the mail? Absolutely love it. Okay, and the other message was, this one is from, uh-oh. Okay, that's that's somebody that's that's a different message. That's um, I ordered some machine parts, so that's a different message for that. I want to go to the blog and see who's posts that I've missed all the way to the bottom because we read the ones at the top. And and next time I promise I will have it set back so it goes into my email. Here's Patricia Patricia who says, "Love your energy. We just celebrated our 32nd anniversary, and I said the same thing about my hubby putting up with my craziness for 32 years. Happy early second anniversary to you and your hubby. Thank you. Um, I'm really really excited that we get to celebrate our anniversary on this cruise, and not only." Our, is hubby and I celebrating our anniversary but a really special treat is his um, older brother Myron and his sister-in-law Pam are celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary. Yes, all three kids got married in August. Um, Dave's dad is a farmer and s told us all, nobody get married during harvest season please. And so what did we all do? Got married uh, right in the middle of, of harvest season. But we have to had to do what we had to do because of, of school and stuff. Um, but Myron and Pam will be joining us on the cruise too. So uh, it's a it's a double anniversary celebration, and I'll be get, getting to sew and teach a wonderful group of quilters. I'm sure it's going to be just packed full of fun. Thanks, Patricia. Happy anniversary to you. Avon says, "How many quilts have you made with scraps?" You know, I lost count. It's it's one of those things that you just you stop counting because um, how many pizzas have you eaten in your lifetime and does it matter? Nope, just as long as you enjoy it. I, I used to think that I could count each and every quilt and would number them all but you know how it goes. Um, pretty soon quilts are being given away as, as gifts for babies and um, or they're being given away for charity things or, or things like that and you just stop counting because the number gets ridiculous. This one is from Tracy who says, did a Disney cruise with the family the 1st of July and loved it. I did the helicopter glacier climbing with my niece and nephew. I would have regretted not going. The climbing is optional, but the experience and views are unforgettable. I will be 48 soon and was able to climb higher than some of the younger guys with help. Do it for the once and lifetime experience, but have whatever you do. Yes, great quilt shops too, and that's from Tracy in Baton Rouge. So Dave, she says, do the helicopter glacier excursion, okay? The Girlfriend Gap says, I have just purchased an antique Singer sewing machine. It is portable with a wooden case. Do you have a source for referencing old machines to find out more about them? And she says, thanks for any info, and that's Janita. Janita, if you go to the blog at quiltville.blogspot.com, click on my Vintage Machines tab, okay? At the bottom, you have to scroll through. Yeah, yeah, it's my whole herd. There's a whole library of links for dating your singer, for finding out what model your singer is. If it doesn't show you right by the badge what the number on your singer is, you said it comes in a wooden case, so it could be any number of models. This will help you identify those. There's also links for cleaning and servicing and all kinds of, of things um, for your vintage machines and I keep adding links there as I find something that has the information that I need I add the link there in a way to bookmark it for myself and hopefully sh save it for somebody who might need that information so that's under the vintage machines tab at the top of the blog you will love your machine this is from Bev at Quilt Farm she says went on a glacier whale cruise back in 2005 and could not figure out why they said to wear layers got there and figured out that it would be way cold that close to the glacier. So I guess it's like going into the grocery store and trying to dig um, ice cream out of the freezer doors when you're in shorts and a tank top. You're up that close to something frozen, it's going to be cold. So we will bring layers. She says she's working on trimming half square triangles to the size needed for the leader ender project. Are you doing our leader ender project? Split nine patch pattern on the blog. Okay, She says, um, 
Cutting down now rather than before sewing. Got a feeling I would have over a thousand of half square triangles due to several other projects that use the same size. That's what's great about the scrap user system. Most projects do use the same size. So if we have these on hand all the time, they're ready to go. So glad you could uh, tune in with us tonight, Bev. Here's Molly who said, I inherited a Singer 401A. It looks similar to your 301. I need to get tension knob fixed, but can't wait to sew on it. Molly, you will love your class 400 machine. The 401 is absolutely wonderful. That should have the little levers and stuff to do, and maybe cams to do zigzags and things. And it will th thread, um, I believe, straight on. The 400 class machines threaded straight on instead of from the side. So that's another improvement when they went from the 300 series to the 400 series. Great machine. Julie says, you and your husband must go on the raft tour of the Chillicat Eagle Preserve near Haines. Best trip ever. And we saw well over 75 bald eagles in their natural environment. That would be really neat. Dave really enjoyed last week the eagles that were there off the, um, the river in Soldatna. Let's see. Let's see. This one is from Cynthia who says, I'm like you when it comes to dressy. What to wear for shoes? When I am working, I wear boots. All the rest of the time, I am Berkies. For dressy, I would wear either black strappy Berkey sandals or brightly colored ones. I may need to go shopping in Seattle when I get there. And I think that was another ping from the hubster. Let's see what he says. I'm at Dad's watching you and Duck Dynasty. <laughs> okay, so you are only catching me on commercials. I know this for a fact. He did say he was um, going to watch Duck Dynasty tonight. Well, since he's busy there, I'm going to take just another couple of, of questions. And I have a date with a hot tub by myself because I'm a little bit tired and a little bit sore and... Um, after so much sewing this last few days with Mickey, my back is kind of bothering me, so I'm going to go out for a soak in a little bit. This one says, okay, wait, I'm not sure. Wait, no, that was a comment on something else. This was YouTube, and it says, Well, that's, of course, from probably a 16-year-old boy who has nothing better to do. So he should go watch somebody else's because we all care about Quilt Cam. And this one is Nancy, who says, Just found Quiltville recently. Fell in love with the Boxy Stars pattern. Just finished top tonight. Thank you for Quilt Cam and all the great patterns on your site. And that's Nancy in Wyoming. And she really, really played with color well here. That's her Boxy Stars quilt. If I put it closer to the camera, will it focus in on the phone? Maybe not. Boxy Stars is under the free patterns tab, the top of the blog. So you'll find it there. It works with your two and a half inch squares and two and a half inch strips, which we're all trying to use. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. I will let you know when the next time we do Quilt Cam is. In the meantime, if it's still light out and early where you are and you're, you are still got your second wind going, don't stop sewing now just because I'm logging off. It's 10.30 here, and Bonnie turns into a pumpkin very shortly. Um, tomorrow is a wrap-up. I'll have a couple blog posts going, and then I'm packing my stuff, and we are off to Alaska. So stay tuned. Hopefully you'll enjoy what we get ourselves up to. I'll send as many updates as I can, including photos from um, the classes on the cruise, so you'll get a little feel of what it's like, and I hope that you'll travel with me next time. Um, Keep, uh, keep sewing, everybody. We'll catch you next time on Quilt Cam. And what I have to do now is reach over here and hit this end broadcast button and wait a couple seconds before it finishes the feed so that it will archive onto YouTube. So I will click the button and then sew for a couple minutes and we will be done.